Detectors, in this case contamination monitors. We have a total of four in our labs. Three from Berthold including the LV122, one in a different version and the Como 170. Especially regarding the yellow boy, I keep getting comments about it, so I'll use this video to address some of the most common remarks. You hold in the detector wrong, it measures at the bottom, you dumbass. Yes, a classic Como 170 really does measure at the bottom. And that's true here too. But this is the Como 170D. Unfortunately, it doesn't say that on the detector. But this version is also equipped with a Geiger Müller counter to measure the dose rate, hence the D. It also measures contamination at the bottom using a plastic scintillator. So depending on the value on the monitor, I have to measure from the bottom or at the front. The IPS or CPS, counts per second, impulses per second, are measured at the bottom. And with a few button presses, I can optionally subtract the background. Whether I do this in a video depends on what's more important for me or sometimes just the presets. With a few more button presses, I can switch from CPS to Sievert, at which point it measures the dose rate at the front using the Geiger Müller tube. Yes, measuring dose rate with the Geiger Müller tube is a controversial topic on the internet, but speaking from practical experience, it doesn't really bother me whether it says 40 or 70 microsieverts an hour. I'm just taking these measurements for the video because many people find them interesting. For all practical purposes, I differentiate between the 10 microsieverts per hour, the 100 microsieverts an hour, and the millisieverts range. What matters to me is the magnitude, which determines how carefully I handle them. That's all about the Como 170. I'll link the manufacturer's page in the video description. There are other versions of this device. Now I'll prepare some measurements to address the next comment. For this I'll take sample measurements of all our beta only emitters using the most accurate and by far the most expensive one, the Como 170D. Sample 1, 2 and 3 are sulfur 35 solutions and sample 4 is a supposedly dead phosphorus 32 solution. This was from the radioactive flower video. We can clearly measure values from these sulfur 35 solutions. I wrote them on the bottle alongside with the date out of curiosity. As of recording today is July 22nd, 2024. The phosphorus 32 solution is from the 17th of January 2024, so about six months ago. It's nearly 12 half-lives and in all practical radiation protection we say 10 times the half-life is sufficient for this to be considered completely dead. We still measure something because the Como is really sensitive and 10 times the half-life means that the activity has halved 10 times. In our case, it's 12 times, so from the original 37 megabecquerels, 9 kilobecquerels still remain, which the Como can easily detect. The Sulfur 35 solutions are being prepared as stock solutions for the January 2025 and May 2025 practical course. Both solutions are intended to have the same activity at the start of the practical course. So the May solution is currently more active than the January one, which we can measure quite well. Are our detectors suitable for measuring Sulfur 35 contamination? I mean, why wouldn't they? Plastic. We cover our contamination monitors with clinch film. This often gets remarked upon, why do you do that? You can't measure alphas now. Yes, that's completely true, but we also never work with pure alpha emitters. Sulfur 35 is a low energy beta emitter and it's used only in our practical course. When we test it, we can see that the weak Sulfur 35 solution really can't be measured that well. That's problematic because most contamination involves a single drop not spilling the whole stock solution. Higher activities penetrate the plastic, but the absolute value doesn't matter. What's important is identifying where the contamination exists and where, not really by how much. This means that when working with Sulfur 35 during the practical course, we must remove plastic wraps to get more accurate measurements. With a plastic wrap, the detector reads a maximum of 24 CPS on the stock solution. Without the wrap, it reads 38 to 39 CPS. Without the wrap, it also detects that solution 2 is active. So why do we use a plastic wrap at all? As mentioned, we rarely work with sulfur 35, but rather with high energy beta emitters that sometimes also emit gamma radiation. These are guaranteed to be detected. But more accurate measurements are better, right? Sure, but cleaning a contaminated detector and risking damaging the thin aluminium layer isn't really worth it. So we use a plastic wrap as pragmatic choice to prevent direct contamination of the detector. Even if it means having lower or skewed readings, it's still worth it because no one wants to clean or 
destroy the detector. Contamination detection isn't all about exact analysis, but rather, is it contaminated? Is it not contaminated? If it is, does the value go down after wiping and cleaning? That's it, I just wanted to address these two points because they come up quite frequently and now I have a detailed response which I can refer people to. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.